Morning, William. Morning, Davey. Thank you both for your time for joining me in the Star Sports Zoom room again. It's first thing Friday morning. Newbie today, newbie tomorrow. Big race tomorrow. The Ladbroke Trophy, formerly the Hennessy. Brilliant race year on year after year. And we'll just dive straight into it. I'll give you a rundown of the betting. The Star Sports, we bet five, uh, 11 to 2, should I say. Vindication, the favourite. Killed the start 7 to 1. The conditional Cheltenham winner. 15 to 2. I write, it was impressive last weekend, went third in the Charlie Hall, 15 to 2. Black Op, remember him, 8 to 1. Copperhead, 9 to 1. I could go on and on. Uh, looking at it on paper, you might think I'm being unfair. I wouldn't say it is a vintage race, but I would say it's deeply, deeply competitive. It is a real, real good punting race. 11 to 2 vindication, Bill. We'll start off there. Would you be bigger or shorter him in the betting? Um, phew, the difficult. I mean, he's the class, or well, the, the classiest. He's the one class horse in the race for me that I could see building from this with a win. Yeah, he could end if, if he won here, he could end up in a gold cup. But he's exactly. you know, he's rated one six one, and you go back through the horses that are rated one six one. You know, uh, you know, Denman was rated one six one when he won this in two thousand and seven. You know, Bosworth was one sixty. Um, Davy, I'll, I'll whisper it quietly, but. Davy was on Whisper was 161. So that's the quality. <laughs> you know not to mention that in front of me, let alone in front of him. Jesus Christ. Should, should have run off 159, and I think it would have made a difference. It did, because it was the it was the Kempton run or whatever, wasn't it? It went up yeah. a couple of pounds. Uh -huh. So yeah. there is no, there is no, there is no hiding place at, at, the, at the top of, of the of the weights. And, and you know, the, the starting point with indication is that the schooling round was deeply unimpressive. I mean, obvious place to go to Davy on that. I mean, how big a worry is that for Vindication fans? that schooling round where he was jumping out to his right? In, in a very competitive handicap like this, errors are going to be more, you know, they're, they're going to have a huge effect on, on, on this. Um, look, Newbury is not the worst place for it to be uh, a, an issue because you really only jump in one, one fence is you, you take a turn and there's the, 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 the cross fence in front of you. Um, of all the tracks, I don't think Newbury would 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 uh, hasn't isn't going to have that much of an effect on him. Uh, he seems to, I don't know, he does it sometimes, and sometimes he doesn't do it. But for me, I, I'm I'm a stickler on horses in very competitive races, giving away ground. I think he'll he'll need to be gaining ground rather than giving it away. It's funny, Bill. You should mention Denman there because going off track slightly, but in an era where we can't go racing. I've got written down on my notes at the top there, 2009, the most impressive thing I've ever seen on a race course. What's the best thing that either of you two have ever seen on a race course? It cannot be repeated. It cannot be repeated. <laughs> in an open chat room like this and my wife in the room next door. <laughs> we'll go to the Prime Minister then. Bill, what's the most impressive thing you've ever seen on a race course? Uh, Lord Windermere. Winning the RSA chase <laughs> when I was on at 50s, that'll do for me. Right, there we go. I, I'm, I'm in a host and I'm the worst at veering off course. If you're looking to make up ground, I'm certainly not a horse that does that for you, David. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of indication about you. There yeah. is, there is. It's nice to know I'm favourite for a big handicap then. Yeah. Right, so vindication, 11 to 2, Bill, too short or value? Yeah. I, I, I'm going to turn it on his head. I'm going to say to Davey, if you could pick one of these, who would you like to ride? It's a, it's, a, it's a shock and tough one. Um, I was very impressed by the condition. Um, I actually like a horse called Potterman. Mm. Okay. Um, and it wouldn't have been a million miles away from being, being able to ride a meter um, back in the day. But um, I just think that there's a big race in him, I think, off the weight. Uh, I just think there's issues with the likes of Vindication and, and, and them. And I just thought the two horses for me or Potterman and Kildysart. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't write off the two of them. And there's huge value in them as well. You know, they're not the obvious ones. I think, I think Kildysart, look, he's, he's been well fancied at two festivals, isn't he? He was fourth in the JLT, I think just got tip touched off by the conditional last year. Looks to have a nice little prep run behind Roxana. She looked bang fit last time up at Weatherby. Seven to one, second favourite. Bill, what do you make of Copperhead? Now, we did... 350 Cheltenham previews together the week before the festival. And I think he was the most popular horse on all the panels we did. He fell at the festival. He's pulled up last time. 
The Tizard horses certainly haven't come out firing this season. Can you make a case for him at nine to one? He wouldn't be on my shortlist because I like a horse in form and, and I know he had a prep race over hurdles, but he ran no sort of race and he was pulled up. He's still got plenty to prove uh, for me. If, if he's back to the form he was in at Ascot when he won pre Cheltenham, he'd be competitive. But for me, he's plenty short enough. Uh, you know, vindication. You asked me the question whether I like him before. I like him. I don't like him at six to one for a horse that gives away all that ground. And he might jump fine, but it, he, he'll have to be really good to win off that mark. Um, I definitely respect, you know, they're, they're all tied in these horses. Kill the Sarts tied in with vindication. Vindication tied in with I right. I mean, I right um, is plenty short enough too for a horse that's not won over three miles. You know, that's, that's a worry. Many Clouds was the last horse to come to this race who, who hadn't won over three miles. And like, it's, a st it's a three and a quarter mile race. They've got to yeah. stay. And that just worries me. I'm not saying he won't stay, but he hasn't proved he does stay. Same with Black Op. He hasn't run a proper race over three miles before. Does he really stay? I agree with Davey. I do really like the Potter Man. I, I, I was on him last time. Uh, they rode him like he didn't stay three miles and gave him plenty to do when they turned in in the Badger Ales. And then he flew and he was just denied. Uh, he's gone up a little bit. He's, he's off, off um, one four two. Um, you know that's the only, only niggle. You know, is is he quite good enough? Um, he, no, no, he's gone. Up, he's gone up to one four seven, but he's running off one four two. So he's he's actually five pounds ahead of the game here. Um, I think he's a big player. I agree. He's twenty to one is is a is is a is a you know is definitely a play there. Um, the main selection for me though is right at the bottom cloth cap. Right at the bottom, John Joe O'Neill's horse off a bang off 10 stone. Now, the key to this horse is good ground. That's what he's going to get. It looks like it's going to be a good ground uh, Labrooks trophy. He's wearing cheap pieces for the first time that might eke out a bit of improvement. He looked like he raced, raced a bit lazily um, at um, Cheltenham last time. Um, key bits of his form. He's a real proper stayer. He was third, just touched off, beating the nose in the uh, Scottish National last year on good ground. He's a terrific jumper, stays really well. Tom Scoo takes the ride right the way down the bottom of 10 stone. I'm just convinced this horse around 12 to 1, maybe 14 to 1, is going to run a really, really big race in a wide open handicap. Yeah, I think I think you touched on he's around the right price. Ironically, if you look at this race, 15 of the last 18 winners have been 12 to 1 or shorter. It doesn't really go to big price horses. But the other thing is that, you know, when you've got these big handicaps, you're looking at things off featherweight. It's the top of the top end of the weights that normally do well. The, the shorter prices. 10 stone 13 or better. I think it's interesting you both put up the potter man. I'm going to put up the secret, the secret investor, who that bit of form, the Denman Chase, he's got coarse form. He's been in the front two, seven of his last nine rounds. Paul Nichols, 10 to one. I've got to get it in there because the only bit I've had at the weekend so far is secret investor. Davey, you're going to put up Kill Desart and Potter Man. Yeah. Bill, two darts. I'll go Cloth Cap and Potter Man. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Let, look, re, a race we all look forward to every year when it comes around. Now, we've covered the main event of the day. Should we go back now? What should we do? Let's go to the 150 and look at this mm -hmm. this handicap hurdle after two and a half miles. And Davey, I'll let you go straight in because I know you're a big fan of T Clipper, who was well fancied um, by the Lacey team for Cheltenham, and they decided not to run him that weekend. And I think come about 1.56 on Saturday afternoon. That might look like a decision vindicated. Uh, five to two, we bet the T-Clipper. Clear, clear favourite. What can you tell us about him? Are you still in that camp? Yeah, again, look, my, my opinion hasn't changed very much about him. Um, I, I just think he's a horse on the up. Um, I still think off his mark that he's very well capable of winning a handicap. Um, and because maybe I wouldn't surprise Surprise me this time next year where you may, might see this horse stepping up into graded company, but let it be over fences or uh, back over hurdles. I'm not quite sure, but I just think that he's definitely a very progressive horse. And um, I think obviously we didn't get a chance to see him the last day, but, uh, you know, I think the track and everything will suit him. Um, there isn't any worry um, about the track as such as we had maybe that we said the last day that we had never seen him around Cheltenham. So, um I think for me, he's the horse. Um, the only, like the only bogey is that whether something comes and nabs him off off a real light weight or something like that. But the 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 distance from top to bottom in the handicap is not huge, so there's you know seventy five percent of the race are eleven stone or higher. So I, for all them reasons, I think he's still the horse. Yeah. Uh, Bill, the Lacey team will be glad, glad they waited. They've got their ground as well, haven't they, this yeah, weekend? Yeah, 
got their the ground. great form. Tom is having a great time with it as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've got their ground. Two, two and a half, two miles, four and a half furlongs is probably his trip. I was a bit worried about him over three miles last time, but he he was well on top at Chepstow, so I could see why they wanted to step him up in trip. But back on good ground over this trip, or you know, he'll he'll be a worthy favourite. Um, would I did select? you think Champagne Platinum was interesting coming back to hurdles? Obviously, chasing just didn't work, did it? He was actually going to be my selection, Champagne Platinum. So we see him back here. He was impressive at Newbury over hurdles, and then it all went wrong over fences last mm -hmm. time. But he was he was last season. But you know, his bits and bobs. He was third in a Grade One. He got his act together. You know, the four miler wasn't the right race for him. Um, if you said to to Nicky Henderson that December a couple of years ago, is this going to be a one thirty five, one thirty seven handicap hurdler? He'd have laughed at you because I think they thought he was going to go to the very top. Yeah, he might just be the one that's that's you know now that we've got some good ground, he might might be the one that's um, a bit of value around eight to one. But I think T Clipper is the one to beat, but Champagne Platinum the danger. Yeah, I, I'm with you. A favour I'd want to be with is T Clipper at the weekend. If we scoot forward 35 minutes to the 2:35, the Joe Field and, and find a favour I'd like to take on. Uh, let's go straight in. Maria's Rock is five to four favourite for this race. Mm -hmm. Now, when Nikki's got a horse of this quality, you normally see them starting off at grade one track. She's done her winning at Foss Lass Haydock Taunton. I thought five to four was desperately short. If I was in the trading room, and obviously they don't let me anywhere near it, and rightly so, I can assure you we would not be five to four this. And I think my, my main bet of the weekend, having gone through this all day, would be Botox has... He's a six to one chance to take on uh, Maria's Rock here. He he, he was well, I was really impressed with the Mitchell, and he got his revenge over the the Nichols horse, All Mankind, who subsequently was flying victory over fences. I thought you're going to get six to four Botox has to come third, five to four Maria's Rock to win it. This looked a classic bookmaker versus punter duel. You tell me she's pretty special, Bill. Then go on. Um. No one knows whether she is or isn't. That's 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 the problem with her. She's the, the one thing I would say is that it she comes from a yard that don't normally label their geese swans, you know. So that, that's you have to respect that she's. But there's not any normally any fat on the bone, is there, for the punters either? No, no, there isn't fat on the bone, and you know the horse that she hammered first time out has been beaten seven times since. But you know the con man who she thrashed at Haydock has won lots of races, and Midnight Gift. You know she's she's winning those races. This is a different test. It was, the last two runs have been over soft ground. She's had a win done as well. She might be very good. She wouldn't be for me at the prices. Um, yeah. I I agree with you. I think Botox has is 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 slightly under the radar i would actually go for sebastopol another tom lacy horse yeah i th that would be the next one for me and davy you were saying they're in good nick aren't they the lacy horses well thomas is hard for great nick consistently running all running well and um yeah i, I you know I, i'd be a big fan of tom's horses to be honest yeah the thing about sebastopol too was that was that he should be three from three over hurdles the four in there he choked a bit that's why he wears a tongue tie and he he won. If you watch a replay of that, um, the race when um, he won at Musselburgh, he, 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 he won with plenty in in hand. Beat Ashington, came and pounced on it late off, off one three six. He's off one four two now, but he's probably better than that. And bear in mind that I fancied him long range off for for the Greatwood on good ground. You've got to fancy him in a race like this. It's 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 quite condensed, but um, I think the market probably has Maria's rock a bit too short. She, she'll have to be as good as they think she is to win. And I go Sebastopol each way. David, can I push you for selection in that race? Do, but do you think plenty short enough that Henderson favourite in the race? Yeah, she's short enough. I actually, I, I know her, her family, uh, Robert Tyner trained her mother. She was a good, solid sort of a, a filly as well. Um, I've no huge opinion. And it's, it's, it's extremely tough. Um, but I, I have... Uh, watched her running and I was impressed by her um, again the handicap from top to bottom is very limited so it's nearly as much a conditioned race as it is a handicap and for that reason I still think the favourite has her chance yeah I mean the funny, funny thing was is that I think this is the race that um, she he, he introduced last year's um, champion hurdle winner in I think yeah. this is I, I was I, I, I was the, the same, of the same opinion that a filly Taking her nice and slow, you must remember, like it's it's not a gelding, and that's maybe why he didn't start her off high high up. So I think uh, Nikki's probably building her up to a, a, a tilt at the festival, and I think this this should should be taken in 
as she goes along. And I think she, I, I still think she's capable of winning this. Yeah, I mean, Epitant won this race last year off off a mark of one three seven. So this this filly comes in here off off a mark in the one forty. So you know it's you know. Do you remember the money for her that day, Phil? <laughs> I remember she was well well fancy, but this, this, <laughs> got well go. fancy. Louis. She's got four, you know she's four pounds higher rated Maria's rock anyway. So you know we. Five to four, six to four may look skinny. It might not be when she wins the champion hurdle in March. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we can we can rewind to this, and the YouTube can have put her up saying that could happen, and I can be the Wally that's putting her, putting people off backing at five to four in a race about the third is difficult. So, before I make a mess of it even more, let let's scoot on to the three thirty five, which is the last race of the day at Newbury before we touch on Newcastle. 335 um moonlighter the seven to four favorite for nick williams iblio five to two chance for nisha williams and then we've got the king of may six to one mester miller seven to one zanza 15 to two thatcher eight to one for the skeleton yard i i thought there was much more um appealing betting propositions earlier on in the day bill but i, I know you like this race you had to look at it i thought iblio would probably need a bit more rain to be perfectly honest i was put off him Where's the value lie in the race? Please? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Moonlighter was just mugged by a very good horse in Grenatine last time, and that was a really good run and it, on good ground. And it's it's clear that he's a well deserved favourite. Will probably win. Got eleven twelve. Won't be easy off mark of one four seven, but he brings the best form to the table. Um, looking further down there, um, I was half interested by Zanza. Richard Johnson rides for Philip Hobbs. Third start, a couple of novice runs, you know, sighters yeah. getting better with each start. But, you know, again, got a little mark of 138. The handicapper hasn't done huge favours. Um, there's only the eight of them. I suppose the one that I'd say is the value at this point is the, I don't know if you actually mentioned it, but it's the Russian Doyen right the way down the bottom. It's about a 12, 14 to one shot. One, yeah. one, um, one over fences um, in January 2019, a novice handicap off, I think, a three pound higher mark than this, 138. Lines up here, ran a bit better than the pulled up show last time. Yeah, some friends of mine own the horse. So they really fancied him for Cheltenham. He, yeah. he, he ran better than what the paper yeah, suggests. Yeah. He, he did run better. He's got blinkers on for the first time, and I think this triple suit better. And uh, it just wouldn't it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world for him to be getting a best part of a stone off the moonlighter to make it interesting. And he'd probably be get my dart in a race like that. And I'll let them know you're the one that will be ruining the, ruining the price of the horse in copy on Friday and Saturday for them then, yeah? Uh, Dave, Dave any, any opinions on anything else? Anything to take your eye? Uh, no, it's just I always like to take notice of what Brian Ellison. I, I, I like, he's, he's a very, very good trainer. And um, with Newcastle on uh, the same day, um, just heading down south with uh, the King of May, I know he's look. He's been to New Newbury before and finished third, beaten a long way by uh, simply the bets. But I think, I think he's enough ability to be very competitive in this race. I think he's well in off his mark. I think Nico Boyn, the Boyneville is a great booking and yeah, eye catching booking. That isn't it? For yeah, Brian Edison? yeah. I just, I just, I just. There's something about this horse. I know his sexual runs, where you know they're they're, they're not. It's it, it seemed to be. You know, it's a long way from what he's going to face into now, but I just still think that he's very much unexposed and over fences. And even getting back to his running at the festival behind Venera Charm, he was still wasn't disgraced in the middle of the field. So for that reason, I thought maybe he could be, you know, just on the right side of the handicapper and the jockey booking is very, very um, eye-catching. OK, so that's Newbury wrapped up. Um, just to conclude, I, I, I was very much in the secret investor camp and uh, Botox has Bill, you're the Potter man, weren't you? It was the main sort of selection at Newbury in the same view. Uh, no, 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 no. Potter, Potter man, but also Cloth Cat was my main one in the in the actual labyrinth choice. Of course. Right, let's scoot on to Newcastle and we'll get up the fighting fifth and I'll give you the prices. So let's have a look. Where are we? The 205, the fighting fifth. The four to seven favourite is, is a mayor who was well placed at the beginning of last season at Newbury called Epitant. <laughs> um, let's let's focus on her, whether we think she will win the race and then we'll we'll work out who we think the horse will be to follow her home. Because if you took her out of the race, it's an absolutely blinding race. But we bet four to seven Epitant, four to one Sco Royale, nine to two Silver Streak, uh, nine to one Ribble Valley. I assume you both think she'll get the job done. Uh, I, do, I, I do anyway. Um, Nicky Henderson fighting fifth. He knows exactly what's needed to get the job done. Um, he'll have her spot on for the race. 
I do think that it has plenty of depth to it, as in not so sleepy. If he jumps off in front, he's going. You're going to be guaranteed uh, pace, and that will mean that Epitant will have to be, you know, pretty fit uh, on our seasonal uh, debut. And then for that reason, then you've the likes. You have to bring in the likes of Silver Streak, School Royale, all them horses that have a run under their belt. Um, yeah. You know, so it's a tricky race, uh, and you're kind of waiting until the the tapes go back because not so not so sleepy could turn around and go the other way just as quick as he could go, you know, quite a, a very fast gallop out in front and put everybody to the pin of their collar. So, again, you just don't know what way it's going to unfold until until you know you're getting close to off time. But I thought if not so sleepy went off and went a really good gallop, um. You could put Epitante to the pin of her collar fitness-wise. I definitely think she's the best in the race. And that would leave the gate open for the likes of Silver Streak and um, company. Well, Bill, I seem to remember a, um, a game front running performance led to a boil over last year, didn't it? And, and the bookmakers got a result. Uh, who interests you the most in behind the favourite at this stage? Yeah, I mean, I think, to be fair with Bu- to Bouvardier last year, he got, didn't he get uh, half, yeah. half the last hurdle stuck in his <laughs> He did have a head stuck in his leg on the way home, didn't he, to be fair? But these things can happen. I actually think um, that, obviously, Epitamp would be the obvious one, but I, I think she's got a harder task than the market suggests. She's got two very good, good ground horses, and it's look, looking like it's heading towards good ground at, at Newcastle in Shoe Royale and Silver, Silver Streak, who are both at their best on good ground and will pounce late. And I think it'll be a scramble, and Davy hit the nail on the head. It just depends on her fitness. If she's fit, she'll win. If she's not fully wound out, she might get mugged by a Silver Streak or a Shoe Royale. At the prices, I couldn't possibly back her at 4-7. to seven. I would definitely be in the probably Shoe Royale camp, to be honest, because I think he's returned after his wind up in better form this year than he's been in his previous kind of five, six years. Uh, he's been, that was a... He looks a different horse to me this year. I mean, if ever there's a horse, I've got a hold up my hands and I've got wrong for pretty much his entire career at Sky Royale. But the two performances this season have been brilliant. It's going to be bang hard fit. Four to one looks a fantastic well, price to me. The about Shoe Royale is that, is that he won at the Welsh Champion Hurdle. Um, Baliandi held that form up really well in the True. hurdle. And then he was really good last last time um, last time at Wing Canton. You know, one couldn't couldn't have done it easier on, on, on good ground. I think he's an improved horse. I think he can breathe now, and I think he will give the Epitant a fright. Whether he's good enough to beat her, I don't know. But I'd definitely rather be with Shoe Royale at around four nine to two than I would Epitant at four to seven. I will mention Ribble Valley because he's a horse who's always had an enormous reputation up north. Every time we get the sort of ten to follow. Uh, teams through every northern correspondent's got that horse in theirs nine to one for a horse that's sort of got the reputation but never really done it in a, in a top class race you think that represents fair each way value um no, <laughs> I no in, I in, in, I. <laughs> the reason maybe i mean I get, I get egg on my face but if there were eight runners maybe the thing with with ribble valley for me is that all is form the last three runs heavy soft heavy soft the one time he encountered decent good ground at Cheltenham, Master Debonair lapped him really. But I, I, I think he's he lo- appears to be a soft soft ground horse, or shows his best on soft ground. And if it, you know, Midley won on his on his debut on on, on a decent surface. But um, you know, second run back, maybe the wind has done it improved him enormously, and he can be competitive. But for me, if he finished in front of any of the three that we named, it would be a shock. I, I, to- I totally agree. Right, let's finish up with the rehearsal change at uh, uh, rehearsal handicap. Sorry, the last at Newcastle with some, some dour stayers, and they'll need to be um, Saturday afternoon. I think Pim heads the market versus Star Sports, who's the five to two favourite. What more is a four to one chance of Henry Daly, a horse I've always admired, who never quite gets it done. The Butcher said four to one joint second favourite. Definitely Red, who's running Gold Cups, a fifteen to two chance. Brave Eagle eight to one. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm drawn once again to Watmore because I'm a fool, but I thought definitely Red has got the class here on his side. He's got top weight of 11 stone 12, but I think his quality could get him through and I, I can't see him at the three, eight to one. Davey, I know you're a fan as well, definitely Red, or do you think that weight will just tell in a race like this? Yeah, no, a class horse. Um, you know, and a class horse is show, has often showed his class around uh, Aintree, maybe not so much, uh, didn't seem to be shown the, the real high class around an undulating track. So somewhere like Newcastle um, does seem to play into his favours. Um, 
I was heading more towards the butcher said of 10 7, um, Ollie Murphy, um, Aidan Coleman, another good jockey booking. So for me, I was just thinking maybe the butcher said it still has might, might be a little bit unexposed. Uh, heading into this and staying on youth when you have the likes of Shantu Village, a 10 year old York Hill going left handed, um, taking risks in 11 year old, you know, I just think he could be on the, on the up, the butcher said. Um, I think Pim's going to be incredibly hard to beat. If you look at Pim's decent ground form, if you take out the two runs last year, they both came on soft ground. It wasn't, wasn't for him. If you look at, go back to this time, um, last year, or December last year, he beat Imperial Aura off levels by eight lengths over this kind of trip at, at, um, at Cheltenham in a novices chase. Absolutely jumped like a, like a stag. And then last time he beat If the Cat, the race fit, If the Cat fits, uh, who they really fancied. It was a two to five shot. Quickened away from him really well. Good horse back in third. Dominator could go well in the Welsh National. That was a really, really good form. I just thought Pim was the class out. He's going to get his ground. Daryl Jacob in hell of a good form at the moment, obviously on the back of, of Bristol de Mai. I thought Pim was a really good favourite. I love Watmore. Uh, he went up four pounds for not winning, which makes life a bit tougher. For it kills you, doesn't it? Henry Daly's horse. <laughs> and he's this two mile, seven and a half trip. You know, at least he's proves he stays it now. But wow, I think it'll take, I, I, I think Butcher said it'll run well, but I think they're all going to be up against it, to, against Pim. I think he's really good on a going day. And if he reappears and jumps a little bit better than he did last time, I think it'll be really hard to beat. His jumping, his jumping was kind of seventy five percent awesome. Yeah. And 25% uh, uh, he put in a few, he put in a few brilliant leaps and a few terrible ones. And I was, yeah. and often you'll know better than any of us, Davy. But often when you start making mistakes, it tells at the end. But he quickened right away again at the end. You know, he jumped no, brilliantly. Well, well, you were looking at the race, thinking that it was being lined up for if the cap fits. And I was impressed by the way he soldiered it out from the back of the second last yeah. to the line, which. He looked, if, he looked a bit ring rusty anyway, so he, he's, he, he could jump better now. He's yeah, got he was, he, was left in, he was left in front on his own. Um, all them things might, might. I was just afraid of him, of his jumping in what is looks like there's going to be plenty of pace. He's going to have no room for error. And um, I, I don't think he's running a handicap well over fences before, has he? Is his first is his first run in a handicap? Is that right? Just trying to think what the, he ran in the RSA. What was this? What was his last run? No, it was a kind of a tree runner race around Sandown. Yeah, yeah, no, it was just novice chases. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, yeah, yeah, novice, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just... novice's chase. He ran, funny enough, he ran in that novice handicap chase at Ascot this time last year. It was that, and he won that. And that was actually, um, there was eight runners there, but he had some, you know, decent Alba, higher sun. There were some decent enough animals behind him. Okay. Um, but but again, it's not a huge field. I th you know, if there's a non runner in there, it's an eight, eight nine runner race again. So that was, I just thought he might be too good for them. Well, that wraps up the weekend well, the weekend in England, should I say. Look, Davey, there is some brilliant racing from Fairy House on Sunday. I know everyone will be keen to hear your thoughts. What I will do is let everyone know that your thoughts for um, Fairy House, the Hatton's Grace, and all the top class action will feature in your blog, which will hit the Star Sports Twitter and the Star Sports uh, content site uh, late Friday afternoon. Um, thank you both, as always, so much for joining us, for making the time to let everyone at Star Sports know your thoughts for the weekend. All the best of luck. Bill, good luck with whatever you tip up in any of the copy. Davey, keep going. Get back soon. We all wish you the best. And we look forward to all being on the race course together once again soon. Brilliant. Thank you.